These caracals have spent their whole life in a cage. Now they've been offered a chance of freedom, but at a price. First, they have to pass several challenging tests. To win their freedom, these cats have to prove that they've got what it takes. The offer of freedom comes from a surprising source, one of South Africa's busiest military airfields. It's our incursion. Eagle beamed the tower, early left, report passing 6,000 foot. Hey, Roger. The airbase lies strategically close to the northern frontier and was originally designed to be well hidden, even from the air. So it was placed in the heart of wild bush country where nature provided the perfect camouflage. For the camouflage to work, some wildlife had to be granted the freedom of the base itself. An unusual challenge for the Air Force commander. At Huspeit, we are currently busy preparing and supporting our forces, uh, combat-ready forces, for a variety of contingencies. We're even preparing for war. Hopefully that will never happen. Then we also, on a, on a daily basis, are doing a lot of flying, force preparation exercises, force application exercises. We are making a lot of noise, we're moving around in the airspace, and we are really interacting with the environment around us. Cobra, morning, sir, line up behind the new Impala. Lining up and standing by for your takeoff clearance, Camelot. Thanks, Camelot. As the Impala jets reach maximum power, the real wildlife is unconcerned. They've seen it all before. Wildlife usually adjusts quickly to repetitive noise. It's the fighter pilots that have the problem. It's dangerous enough up there without anything flying a little too close for comfort. Birds surely is one of the biggest enemies of air crew today and they are constantly aware of where these birds are. The fighter pilots, they look around constantly for enemy aircraft, but also for birds. We've had instances in the past where a bird came right through the canopy, injured the pilot. We had birds that came through the engine, damaged the engine, and the aircraft fell, so we had uh, quite severe losses in the uh, South African Air Force. One must remember that uh, we are sharing the same airspace with birds as well. But surely we are the dominant partner in this. We are the stronger partner. And the easy way would really be to take a gun, a shotgun, and just to get rid of all the birds. But that would be disastrous for the years to come. So we are really looking for natural ways to control the birds. They're looking for a predator that will keep ground birds off the runway. A predator that has even been known to knock sleeping eagles from their roost. But at the moment, the wild, skillful predators they seek are living in deepest England, in a cage. This family of caracals has never had to catch anything. The mother, Florence, is being given a wash by the most precocious of her male kittens, Bold. In the same cage are Bold's brother, Chance, and sister, Shy. For the kitten's safety, their father, Dougal, has been kept in a separate cage since their birth, on his own. Their home is the Gentleshore Wildlife Sanctuary in Staffordshire, where Rob Smith provides all the creature comforts his clients could wish for. We actually rescued the caracals from a place in London. They were rescued by Wildlink, and they was brought here, and we was going to look after them for six weeks. That was two years ago. <laughs> the idea when we rescued them was always that they went back to the wild. And we got to the stage where it was all set for them to go back to the wild, and we got the vet down to check them over and found out that the female was pregnant. 
Her pregnancy prevented their bid for freedom. But Florence's kittens are now eight months old, and the conditions in this sanctuary are far too cramped. Wild caracals leave home before they're a year old and travel far away from their parents. These kittens are beginning to fret. The transition won't be easy, but it would be unfair to turn down the offer of so much wild African space. And Hood Spray is no longer just an Air Force base. Its 5,000 acres are officially recognized as a nature reserve. Beyond lies nothing but wilderness, leading all the way to Kruger, the famous national park. We got the big five right on our doorstep. We got a variety of birds that you don't get any other places. We've got bushveld, beautiful trees. So it becomes very important to preserve this area. Come, come on. Significantly for our caracals, it also has an experienced wildlife team, led by Major Philip Oosthuizen. This base do have other unique problems or environmental problems that other bases don't have. For instance, animals on the runway, birds of prey in the, in the air. All that environmental issues has to be managed. We try to make use of natural methods to control our problems and to minimize our environmental impacts. In an attempt to test natural control methods, the wildlife team introduced these two captive-born cheetah brothers onto the base. The triple fence keeps most of the biggest animals out, but small mammals and birds continually make it under or over to join the wildlife already inside. The cheetah's role is to control the mammals, but they can't help with the birds. Are our caracals really up to this challenge? Kay Hill, founder of Wildlink, the group which rescued the caracals from the pet trade, has to make the decision for them. We approached the Hoods Air Force Base in South Africa during a period when we were actually releasing some other cats there with a view to them taking these animals, releasing them into the controlled wild situation. Uh, from our point of view, putting them back into the wild has got to be better than keeping them in captivity forever. It's a decision she is not taking lightly. When you rescue an animal, you become like its mother, totally responsible for the rest of its life. Wild caracals leap for their prey and are said to be among the best bird catchers in the cat family. But do our caracals even know that they're supposed to jump? We're trying to actually give them a head start. We're doing bird catching training within the enclosure with the kittens. Now obviously in the wild, the kittens learn that from the parents. These kittens don't have that opportunity, so we're having to teach them to do that ourselves. to the audience. But not all the kittens want to play games. Yet this first crucial test is one that, like it or not, all the kittens are going to have to pass. One month later, and the whole family has made it past the first hurdle. This is their last night in captivity in England. Huge challenges lie ahead. The big question is, will their instinct, the same instinct which makes them pace the cage restlessly every night, kick in and see them through? We want to keep them as quiet as we can, really, while we do it. We just need to watch 
the one it went into. The next few hours are a blur of tranquilizers, vaccinations and health checks. A good dose of flea powder. The South African authorities won't allow any stowaways on board. If the cats cope with the endless jabs and the long journey, the next challenge will be an endurance test. Two months in quarantine. At the Air Force Base, it's the height of the dry season. The Cheetah brothers have completed their training. Now, they have a job to do. Large numbers of warthog cause problems. The wildlife team has tried trapping them and driving them off the base. But they always return, burrowing under the fence and dangerously close to the runway. Can two captive-born cheetahs really succeed where man and his defenses have failed? Cheetahs have gone one better than just catching warthogs. Because they like open spaces, the runway has become their favorite hunting ground. The natural solutions, looking at what the cheetahs has been doing up to now, I think that have worked quite well. We haven't had any incidents for quite a while with respect to animals on the runways and collisions with uh, animals on the runway itself. And one can see that the statistics that we keep is that the animals rather avoid the runway area. And that is exactly what we want. So with respect to the cheetahs, we've really achieved our objectives. So the competition for the title Top Cat is hotting up. But there is still everything to play for. The Caracal family has survived quarantine and they're on their way, followed by the Wildlink team, to join the cheetahs at the base. How do you explain the choice that awaits them? Security or freedom? In the end, you have to let them go to make their own mistakes. You have to give them that chance. Florence, now wearing a radio collar, was the first out. She was closely followed by Bold, or was the most daring of the kittens. The others aren't so keen. Dougal, go on. You're free, boy. But Dougal 
also collared, yet most easily recognized by those eccentric flop ears, has spent eight years in captivity. If this is to work, all bonds have to be broken. It's, it's a real mix of emotion because, I mean, it's been three years I've been with these guys and I'm so happy that they're here. It's like the most amazing thing, but I'm going to miss them. <laughs> They really are on their own. With their first sounds of wild Africa. But it would be unfair to put them straight into the wild. To give them the chance to adjust, they'll spend a few weeks in this three acre enclosure. Dougal seeks the familiar comfort of the fence. Wild caracals are expert tree climbers. Florence, still groggy from the journey, never had a tree in her cage. All they're being asked to do is what comes naturally. But what is natural when you don't recognize friend from foe, predator from prey? There is a constant reminder of their mission and a real fear that Dougal might just give up. He and Florence have only a few weeks to change the pattern of eight years of captivity. At the moment, Florence is unsure, even of a hornbill. Soon, she'll be expected to save pilots' lives. In continuation for the morning briefing, bird ingestion is the emergency for today. Looking at the indications for possible bird ingestion, a loud thud possibly followed by fluctuating RPM and the engine surge. Things to bear in mind obviously with the tactical phase, lots of birds below the cloud, especially raptors scanning the ground below. Remember always avoid a bird up and to the side. They always dive down for avoidance. The female kitten, Shy, has been exploring and she's welcomed back. The greeting is a simple contact call between father and daughter. But this is a heartwarming sound. Aside from snarling at the staff, these caracals never called in captivity. Their social skills are progressing well. What about their hunting skills? The hornbill appears to be offering target practice. The kittens are prepared to give it a go. This is Dougal's chance to show them how it's done. Sadly, the connection 
just isn't there. This noisy creature is the cat's main target. Guinea fowl cause most damage to planes at takeoff, and they're the natural prey of caracals. Florence attempts to identify the target. Stalking and tree climbing are positive signs that Florence has not lost her instincts. But one crucial behavior is still missing. There is no sign of the killer instinct. Night is the time for all small cats, yet it brings more strangers for our caracals to face. Should Dougal attack or take evasive action? He may have to learn the hard way. Luckily for Dougal, the Janet knew the score. Florence and Dougal were old cellmates before they were separated when the kittens were born. Nervously, she seeks out her old partner. Her shining eyes reveal that night is indeed her time. She should be hunting, not socializing. Birds in trees are legitimate targets, especially after dusk. To train the cats to the idea, the wildlife team has been leaving their food out, late at night and low in the branches. But these pampered cats are used to skinned meat. Once again, the kittens are learning faster than the hapless Dougal. Increasing competition between Bold and his father may help speed Dougal's learning process. Another dawn breaks, and our caracals have now been guests of this airbase for more than a fortnight. Their training is well underway, and yet they've shown no interest in catching wild birds. But air crews understand better than most that good training can save lives. They'll wait for the caracals. But they won't wait forever. Someone should have a word with Dougal. No self-respecting wild caracal sunbathes. allowing a common Franklin to blow his cover. Dougal could take a lesson from his kittens. Nature has given them the perfect camouflage. All they have to do is hide. Their brother, Bold, has been away pulling down the last of the food, which the wildlife team placed even higher in the trees the night before. Dougal senses an opportunity. He still refuses to leap or climb. As usual, he takes the easy option. Bold challenges for what is rightfully his. But Dougal, heavier and more powerful, is easily the dominant cat. Bold must begin again. An effective strike consists of three crucial elements. First, the leap must be accurate. 
These cats must also learn to hook the prey with their claws and stay locked on, bringing the bird to their mouth in one fluid movement. Then they have to administer the killing bite. Aside from Dougal, all the cats seem to have mastered the accurate leap. As for the rest, Well, they say practice makes perfect. Bold can't resist confronting Dougal again. This is no longer a game. Bold is a year old. Time for a wild kitten to leave his parents far behind. Dougal's instinct is to chase him away. If they're not separated soon, Dougal may kill his son. The clock is ticking for this family. Most pilot training is completed before dark. But each pilot has to complete a certain number of night flying hours. need those caracals more than ever now. Is this progress at last? Wild caracals will knock sleeping birds from their perches. It helps, of course, if the bird is asleep. Training is all about making mistakes and trying again. Is Chance aware he's been rumbled? Or are these well-fed caracals simply quitting too easily? It's a real dilemma for the wildlife team. Should they cosset them or throw them to the wild? A civet would normally outwit a jackal. But two jackals change the odds considerably. Always watch your tail. It's worth taking note of this dogfight because caracals and jackals are old enemies. Luckily, our caracals are protected by the fence. As the drama moves away into the African night, they are still not ready to follow. Our family needs more time, but the seasons push on relentlessly. Always ahead of the game, the Cheetah Brothers are among the first to realize that something unpleasant is on its way. As the clouds pile higher and the winds begin to rise, a mixture of high and low technology sends a warning to the ground crews No one can warn the caracals how to react to this challenge.
All cats hate rain. But English drizzle is a piece of cake compared to the short, sharp shock that's heading towards them. For those that survive these first summer rains, the reward is a season of plenty. Even the birds appear plumper. As usual, our caracals have been spotted out in the open. Their position broadcast to the world, everyone can relax. Scattered by the rains, the kittens make contact with each other. They've all passed the storm test, but nature has thrown them a new challenge. They are no longer perfectly camouflaged. The kittens also need to work at their tactics. Caracals are opportunistic feeders, and besides birds, they should learn to catch small mammals, including ground squirrels. Insects, too, may feature in their diet. Generally, though, the kitten's youthful curiosity has given them a huge advantage over their parents. Each challenge, they've emerged several points ahead of the adults. Tree climbing, no exception. Dougal can no longer rely on his sons to bring down food for him. The tension between father and son has reached crisis point. One more encounter could be fatal. Dougal is finally forced to take the leap. Bold is still way ahead of the race and the closest to his freedom. One more leap, and he could easily clear the fence.
His instinct is to follow the rock monitor lizard and put several miles between him and his father. It's time to let the kittens find out what lies on the other side of the fence. But at all good training schools, they save the toughest challenge to the last. This time for contact town, one on uh, 26 decimal four at the rolling point runway 36. After departure 36, lift the sector in cyber. They may practice every day but nothing can prepare a pilot for real combat. The sniper is cleared off to departure on 36, uh, lift turn. It's the same with the caracals. It would be heartless to send them into the wild without knowing that they can keep themselves alive by tackling live prey. There's only one way to be sure. The wildlife team released some guinea fowl into the enclosure. Dougal is tempted to show them. emergency training, but it doesn't make takeoff any less treacherous for the pilot. Fly heading 090 feet. Okay, scramble 180096000. Copy the wind. Good night. You have to keep a lookout. Guinea fowl is crossing the runway right to left at the Fox section. Turn out left early. Project copy the guinea fowl and to turn out left early. If a bird strikes at high altitude, a pilot may have enough speed to glide until he regains control. At takeoff speed, he has no chance and no maneuverability. He's too close to the ground. All the pilot can do is take evasive action. It's up to the caracal. They get one last chance. This time, it is Bold who lines his sights. No one taught Bold this maneuver. This perfectly executed barrel roll is pure instinct. Bold has passed this test with flying colors, but the family were in this as a team. Can Dougal win his bid for freedom?
on the controls, but it doesn't matter. The result is the same and the answer is a resounding yes. As Dougal and Bold carry off their prizes, the wildlife team has to decide whether the skills of all five cats are good enough to make pass grade. It's graduation day at last, and they've all earned their wings, including Dougal. The wildlife team always suspected that freedom might be tougher on the adults, hence the radio collars. Can you just check both the male and female? The, signal is right. the kittens will have no link back to base but Dougal and Florence will be in radio contact. Well, that's a male signal. It's quite clear, you can hear it. And the females? The females got a stronger signal coming through from our side on our collar. OK, too, let's check on them for, for the last time, see whether they're all right. And then we can open up the gate. OK, there is one. Two of them. You have the male? Let you see them. No. Okay, I don't want to disturb them too much now. They need to be quite calm, calm they come down. before they go out there. Philip and Theo have avoided any physical contact with these caracals. Yet they've watched them for over five weeks. It's not an easy break. These raw recruits have done this training school proud, but their guardians are forced to back off and watch this passing out parade from a distance. Wild caracals never move far in daylight, and our family keeps Philip and Theo waiting. Three of the kittens are there. Waiting until their time. <laughs> Always the maverick, Bold is the first to cross the final divide between security and freedom. Shy is ready to follow, but suddenly the night seems full of new surprises. Last of the kittens is Chance. He follows his sister, but soon these kittens will have to stop relying on each other. Wild caracals are solitary, and now they have the entire base and 5,000 acres of wild bush to choose from. The kittens must break this final bond and go their separate ways. So must Dougal and Florence. Wild males and females only come together to mate. But eight years together is a long time. The good news is that none of the caracals appear intimidated by this new world. Even the adults seem to have a new spring in their step. Things could still get complicated, but it's looking good so far. A week of torrential rain prevents the wildlife team from finding the caracals. On the first dryish day, 
They're out again, still searching. Okay, let's see if we can find any signal from here. But no self-respecting wild caracal gives his position away that easily. Field researchers rarely, if ever, spot wild caracals. They have to work from tracks, droppings, and the remains of kills. If the kittens return successfully to the wild, that's the way it'll be from now on. I think it's one of those kittens because of the tracks we found back there. Well, it's difficult to say how old it is, maybe a day or two with all the rain we had. But when it comes to hide and seek, the wildlife team does have a hugely unfair advantage over Florence. So little is known about wild caracals that by tracking our family, Theo and Philip may add to our understanding of these elusive cats. A few months later, there's a real emergency at the base. Training is suspended. The tower is working at full capacity. The torrential summer rains have caused widespread flooding in neighboring Mozambique. More than two million people are stranded, and the waters are still rising. Hoodsprate has become a center for relief operations, and transport planes carrying emergency aid arrive and depart 24 hours a day. American aid begins to arrive, and the United States Air Force requests the use of hood spray for its operational HQ. This one galaxy transport plane can carry enough food, water, and shelter for 30,000 people. These transport planes can also carry personnel, doctors, aid workers and crew. Fully loaded, all these cargo planes need maximum power. They're extremely vulnerable to bird strike and take off. A bird this size can shut down an engine and bring down the plane. furthest to travel. He's earned his freedom. But more than that, he's up there with the best of the best. Top Cat. <laughs> 